Peter Lilly is a performer, director and workshop leader who extends the possibilities of clown work beyond the Red Nose Clown style as taught by Philippe Gaulier and Jacques Lecoq. Through practical explorations over the last 30 years, she's built up a body of exercises and a unique approach to generating laughter from a darker context. This work goes by the title of Dark Clown. On the weekend of 15th and 16th of July 2016, Peter Lilly brought together a group of students and theatre practitioners to learn this journey from Red Nose Clown to Dark Clown. I just want to uh, start paving the path into clown work because this is my first time. I'm here to open up and get in contact with my dark side in a playful way. I want to find that look, that stock look, dark look of fun and strangeness. I hope to, from this workshop, to go kind of deeper into the clown and uh, find the sweet spot between darkness and light. Mm -hmm. and just, mm -hmm. It gets people to feel comfortable enough to, to feel that. I like to be surprised. And I don't really know what to expect, so yeah, that's why you're here. What I want to get out of this is an experience that I could probably take away and, and use for, for the work that I'm creating. I'm really interested in clown and the teaching of clown. I think I'm going to identify much more closely with the dark clown. Day one, the group begin with some basics of red-nosed clown work. Looking and seeing. So I've just done the first exercise. <laughs> A sequence of exercises gets the students enlivened, moving freely, opening up to the environment, connecting with each other, and developing an undefended way of being. brings amazing qualities for people who are training to be actors. The contact with the audience and the relationship, building up a relationship with the audience, relationship with each other. A new exercise teaches the importance of rhythm, contrast and simplicity. Did you notice what did you say to each other just now? Lovely silliness. Lovely silliness. Yeah, and enjoying the silliness mm -hmm. when they, they were enjoying it. They were enjoying it. And the rhythm really enjoyed the rhythm. Mm -hmm. The contrast yeah. of the looking for approval and then the, of the body doing yeah, that. Yeah, going on in the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But you can't fake looking at people. As an audience member, when somebody's actually looking, you're like, oh, yeah, I can't, I, like you yes. get to be with them. And when they're not really, when they're sort of going over your head or something. Dana like said, looking for approval, but most people weren't, were they? Mm -hmm. Most people weren't, they were just looking. And that it works best when you're 
actually not looking for approval, but just looking to connect. We were all doing the same thing, weren't we? Ostensibly. Yeah, it was really nice. When you, when you just go, you know, I'm doing the, uh, the exercise do without it. comment. I'm mm-hmm. not going to, I don't need to comment. I don't need to add anything or do anything. Just do it. There's no comment involved. The principles of comedy are made clear. And then we see the rule, and we see the breaking of the rule. Mm -hmm. Duncan actually went up and down a little bit, and we went, yeah, that's brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) Because he went consistently up and down. Um, Levo Levo began, and silent, silent feet, (laughs) and meticulous, you know, and small steps, and then it all fell apart. (laughs) And it was brilliant, yeah? And that's that's the thing. So ideally, you do a rule, you know, a rule of three, you do da 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 Da, 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 and then you're dying for number three, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Even if you don't know it. Da, 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 <laughs> we always want to be in community, so so if there's a sound from the audience, even a, even a cough, it's just nice to harvest it in. So in the good olden days, in the old-fashioned circuses, when the people were walking into the circus tent, they were not playing Mala. Stravinsky. They were playing. Uh, climbing is not intellectual. It's, it's often just the shape and the rhythm that we love. Uh, it's uh, Levo's squeak. <laughs> The childhood game of peekaboo teaches students to both affect and respond to others. (laughs) 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 Students are given a process to help them enter the red-nosed clown state. By the afternoon, all the elements have come together. They feel they've established a good rhythm, they'll do the A1. The person directly behind them will not do the A1. No, they will do the A2. <laughs> the person behind number two will do A3. Can you, can you imagine that once in a previous life you understood the concept of a happy heartbeat? Some people think this will be scary clown, angry clown, bad clown. Not scary clown, not bad clown, not cynical clown, not killer clown, yeah, not horror clown. We laugh at some really horrible things, and why is that? As a kind of 
species, why do we laugh at the weak person? So laughter uh, is uh, of use to us. Can you sob? Can you do? <laughs> Can you do? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is always surprised into laughter. Oh, can you laugh? Can you do ha ha ha? <laughs> and stop, good. And go again. <laughs> and stop. Excellent, good. Do you mind doing the laugh? So we're going to do counterpoint. She will laugh, stop, I'll sob, stop, laugh, stop, yeah? In the moment, you, you, you haven't reasoned it out. <laughs> It hasn't gone through the language side of your brain. It's just one image and another image, or, or a rhythm. So it's either contrast or rhythm. <laughs> Good. And now we start, to, we start to notice each other. We add in the takes, just whenever you feel it. You ready? <laughs> a skillful use of rhythm plays a huge part in laughter generation and, and sustaining laughter. <laughs> Good. You got the idea? And alongside of that, uh, with the Dark Clown work, I start to talk about the, the musicality, uh, the vocal musicality involved and also the phrasing. <laughs> Your aim, should you choose to accept it, dum, dum, da, da, dum, dum, is to make him laugh. <laughs> so what have you got? You know, eye contact, seeing if you can get a bit of a reaction, repetition, M matching him, yeah, at stopping, if it's really not funny. <laughs> Relaxing them. Yeah. And then you could try the other one again. So you're experimenting, yeah? Here's another tip. If they are, if you have cracked their mouth and they are actually laughing, see if you can do something that's in the rhythm of their laugh. Once you've got a laugh, see if you can get a separate laugh by saying, Why are you laughing? <laughs> When, when you see somebody and it's really them and their frailty and their, you know, whatever. <laughs> Shoes, pants, <laughs> jewelry, kedgeree. <laughs> it's funny, frailty actually is funny. What we're aiming for with this work is to give the audience this experience of laughing and then at the same time feeling that perhaps they shouldn't have laughed at this. We aim to provide a believable verisimilitude, likeness, of pain and distress and then to, to create laughter. <laughs> In and around that. And as I say, we'll get there step, step by step. Call and response. The Red Nose Clown, I think I've already mentioned today, is, is there to offer its humanity. The Red Nose Clown is selling or sharing its enthusiasm, its silliness, its bossiness, its grumpiness, its pride. But then over here, we have the realms of horror, despair, guilt, shame, pain distress, existential angst. If it's the clown's job to mirror humanity, then the, the dark clown uh, is, is particularly um, giving an opportunity to release into these emotions. 
It is not my intention with the dark clown work to make fun of suffering or of people who have suffered. Big events like Pol Pot's regime in Cambodia, like the torture in Syria, like the disappeared in Argentina, like what's happening to people drowning now. It's so awful that when we try to contemplate it, them, we can numb out we can't really, we can't really get it. We can't really uh, imagine it. And one of the things that I've noticed in the in the dark clown work, particularly in one of the exercises, you can actually see the moment where someone betrays someone else. <laughs> People being forced into situations where they're having to make impossible choices, and they betray the other person. Thank you <laughs> for taking such good care of us and then that awful feeling of shame and guilt and you know or, or the moment someone's dignity is stripped away you know and we can all think of examples of this but to actually uh, be able to witness that moment I think is a, a privilege at least we've seen it do you know what I mean? I mean, we're not watching the real thing, but we're, we're, we're enabling ourselves to bear some kind of witness. It seems to offer a kind of catharsis uh, to the watcher. Clowning in general, I think, is a very useful response for our times because life is absurd. Well, especially these days, life is very, very dark. I have a lot of feelings about many things happen over the world. When, when, for example, when I went to Palestine, in this dark clown way, I think it's a like it's a good way to seduce them to to go into the subject matter, and then they they feel what is serious inside, and then maybe there is a hope for change or for them to reflect about the issues or take action. So I, I think it is really important, especially in the time now now today when terrible things happen everywhere. To go again to the meta level, these big, big horrific events are so awful that they are absurd and obscene, and that drama and sentiment, you know, tears aren't enough. So that we have to go to this place of <laughs> this kind of place of absurd laughter uh, seems at least to better match the kind of ob obscene absurdity. In the, in the 21st century, I think people are, the public are generally more exposed to events that happen around the world and the horrors that happen around the world. I think laughter is a natural reaction to these, but often there's sort of a, a repression or a, there's some sort of social taboo that prevents them from letting out a reaction which could be something as natural as laughter. And the dark clown is a way of dealing with that. It's Oh, <laughs> 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 
All of my friends in the ocean have sent I know, I know you're really <laughs> I know you don't have time to use a pack of Ladies, please. <laughs> Test scoops. Cough. Sometimes serious drama might not really deal with these darker subjects as effectively as comedy could. And I think that The Dark Clown allows you to do that very delicately, without insulting or making fun or being disrespectful. It's merely casting a different light on these, on these subjects. The laughter is so kind of visceral, <laughs> mixed with tears and, and such. The Dark Clown could be a good way of exploring things that people not necessarily want to see every day in a way that they would feel compelled to see. In order to help people find the required stakes uh, to release into the Dark Clown work, that this element of enforced performance, people being forced to perform. That is the strength of the Dark Clown, exploring these dark places. And when the stakes are really high, life or death, uh, or damage to yourself or another human being, that's when we, you can open spontaneously into this realm. So when I say acting, um, very important, no emotional recall is required. As an actor, that safety net, that's, that's, it, it gives you the capacity to do that. It gives you the strength to do that without fear of uh, hurting oneself. <laughs> the guide into the underworld. <laughs> Prisoners must try harder. Prisoners will dance together. Goodbye, goodbye. You, Margot, find yourself saying, This is terrible. I think 
the clown is a is a great possibility to generate dialogue with the audience. There's something about a dark clown that it's really it's really intriguing because of, I prefer things that are a little bit more with an edge. In some of the exercises that we were doing this morning with the dark clown, I found my eyes just watering up. I do like pushing a little bit and provoking sometimes, but I've never found a way of getting of, of getting out. It's that thing of like making people laugh, but then them going, oh. Theatre has a function to enliven and serve people's humanity and to to allow people to access, to witness uh, certain aspects of humanity. And, and that is uh, what I've discovered over the years that the work can offer.